So today is the third Sunday after Easter. So we're going to be here again in San Diego and San D for uh, midnight mass, I guess, because the schedule's working out the way they have today. In any case, the epistle for this third Sunday after Easter is taken from the first epistle of St. Peter, chapter 2. Daily beloved, I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, to refrain yourselves from carnal desires, which war against the soul, having your conversation good among the Gentiles, that where that wherever as uh, whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by the good works which they shall behold in you glorify God in the day of visitation. Be ye subject therefore to every human creature for God's sake whether it be to the king as excelling or to the governor as is sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of the good. For so is the will of God, that by doing well you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not as making liberty a cloak for malice, but as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, and fear God, honor the king. Servants be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the forward. For this is thanksworthy in Christ Jesus our Lord. And you can stand with the gospel. The gospel is taken out according to St. John, chapter 16. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and now you shall not see me. And again, a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said one to another, What is this that he asked? He said to us, a little while, and you shall not see me. And a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. They said, Therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while. We know not what he speaketh. But Jesus knew that they had a mind to ask him. And he said to them, With this do you inquire among yourselves. Because I said, A little while, and you shall not see me. In a little while, and you shall see me. And amen, amen, I say unto you, You shall lament and weep. And the, but the world shall rejoice. And you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. The woman, when she is in labor, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But when she hath brought forth a child, she remembereth no more the anguish, for joy that a man is born into the world. So also you shall you now indeed have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man shall take from you. That's for the words of today's Holy Gospel. So, the St. Gregory the Great tells us in St. Leo that these 40 days were very well used by Christ. They were very important days between Easter Sunday and the day of the Ascension. And these days in which our Lord perfected his little while. A little while you shall see me, and again a little while you shall not see me, because I go to the Father. And when he goes to the Father, you shall be sorrowful, but the world shall rejoice. This little while is something which is necessary for us human beings. We are not made, the angels, for instance, when they have an idea, they have it always. They don't need to recall it, recall it, recall it. And when they do something, they do it once, and it's done forever. When they make a decision, for instance, they decide that they are with God, and the decision is eternal. They cannot change their minds. That's why angels only had one test. But human beings, we have movement of our bodies. We must make a decision, and then we must make the decision again. We must make the decision again, and the decision again, and the decision again. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, of all the creatures on earth, the most like unto him is man. Angels are more wonderful in that they are more powerful, they're more stable, they're more spiritual, they're more intellectual, but they're not more like unto God. We are more like unto God. Because God, when he does something good, he does it, and then he does it again, and then he does it again, and then he does it again. The angels do one good thing, and all they do is overflow their goodness in their other actions, or their evil, in the case of Lucifer, in other actions. But we are meant to do good, and do good, and do good. And when God the Son became man, 
He did good in a human way. He didn't perform one miracle of raising someone from the dead, but he raised from the dead and raised from the dead and raised from the dead. He worked and then he rested. He worked and then he rested. He worked and then he rested. So this little while is very important. What happens during this little while? It is something like the March of the Penguins. You know, the, penguin, the mother penguin has to stay and the father penguin goes to the shore. Mother penguin, the mother penguin has to go to the shore a thousand miles away, get food, and come back and feed them. And while, while, the, while they're going to get the food, the other penguin waits, holding the egg and holding the baby, and they're starving, and there is a sorrow. And the penguin has to go, but the penguin comes back. But when the penguin comes back, he goes empty, he comes back full. And when our Lord Jesus Christ went into heaven, he shed his blood, every drop of his blood, he died on the cross for our sins, and then he came back. And he came back multiple times. When he came back, where did he go? He went up to the Father. You shall be sorrowful, he said, because, and the world shall rejoice. The world rejoices because it hates God, and he has gone away. The, the apostles weep because they love God, and he's not there. And so he goes up into heaven. And why does he go into heaven? Because he's going to fill himself his body, which has defeated Satan through battle. His body, which is worn out from work. His body that is worn out from the work of the cross is going up to heaven to be replenished. Going up to heaven to be refilled. He's also going down to speak to, in, into limbo to speak to the saints and to communicate with them and be filled. Remember what our Lord said when he was with the, with the Samaritan woman. He, when he talked to the Samaritan woman at the well, he had no food. The other apostles, the other apostles went into town, got food, and they came back. And when they came back, the Lord said, I am already, he was not hungry. How come you're not hungry? He said, I have food of which you know not. He had the food of feeding that woman the faith. The food of rejuvenates the heart of virtue. The food of speaking of the things of God. The food of communicating to God, of God to souls, and communicating to God before those apostles came back. He has food of which you know not. The world doesn't know of this food. But our Lord Jesus Christ, when he went into heaven on Ascension, on Easter Sunday, and then he came back many times, and when he came back many times, and he came back many times, he went up and he came back, he went up and he came back, and when he came back, he was always bringing food bringing sustenance to feed to his apostles. He didn't go away just to, just to see that they could be strong without him. He went away to take on food and bring it back and give to them. And this must be done many times. Don't worry. This must be done many times. This must be done many, many times in our church. The fact is that, that uh, the, the, the priests of God and the faithful also, every man must have time to go away to go away. A father needs to spend time alone in prayer and contemplation. The priest needs to spend time alone in prayer and contemplation. And the faithful of all types need to go and be with God alone in contemplation. And then come back. When they come back, they have food. When they have come back, they have sustenance. St. Thomas Aquinas says that the greatest act of charity is to share contemplation. The sharing of contemplation is the preaching of the church. For the last 2,000 years, the priests of God have shared contemplation. They go, as our Lord went, a little while away from the people. But then they come back after a little while and hand down the food that is our sustenance. We have to also recognize this food cannot be had unless there's some kind of struggle, unless there's some kind of sorrow, some kind of cross. First, Lord Jesus Christ goes to the battle of the cross. Then he goes up into heaven. He didn't go to heaven right away in his flesh. His flesh spent 33 years on this earth. Then he went through the cross, and then his flesh went up into heaven. And then his flesh came back. And then he said, My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, but as I give, I give unto you. And he gave his peace unto the apostles, and that peace spreads to the ends of the earth. And so that we must remember there must always be a back and forth. And this is prophesied also by Jacob. When Jacob was in terror, running away from his brother Esau, and he was exhausted, and he fell asleep at a place called Bethel, the house of bread. 
And when I was asleep, he saw angels and a ladder going up to heaven and down, up to heaven and down, up to heaven and down. And so it must be that he was, they were going up to heaven and taking the treasures of heaven and bringing them down. Giving them to people of earth, going back and collecting more treasures and coming back down. We must understand that it was, we are going to try to do the works of charity to help souls. And do the works of charity to hand down the faith to our children. It is necessary that they may continue going up to heaven to take a bit of the treasure and then bring it down and drop it off. Go up and pick up more treasure, bring it down and drop it off. Go up and pick up more treasure, bring it down and drop it off. Hence it was necessary that there be a bringing up, going up to the treasures, coming down and dropping it off. So we are in a great battle, a great battle of the faith. And in this battle, our Lord gathers us little gaps off the battlefield, then back on, off the battlefield and back on. And there must be struggles. There must be challenges. There must be the difficulties of our crisis. Like now we have a mass at midnight, which was supposed to be at noon. And so that, you know, but then what happens? This is divine providence at work. And the fact is that we, we have to, to, to move forward in the, in the holy battlefield. And God will give us the food necessary for our salvation. In this, these 40 days between Easter and the Ascension, Christ is feeding his apostles. And then he's going to go up to heaven again on the Ascension. But then the Holy Ghost is coming down on Pentecost. Then after Pentecost, they're going to be going back into heaven again. And he comes back down again in the lives of the saints. Goes back up into heaven again and comes back down again. Just as Jacob prophesied and saw the vision of this latter. The angels went up and down, up and down, up and down. Always is a constant moving back up into heaven and down. Back up into heaven and down. Whenever we have the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, there's a going up into heaven. And they're contemplating the things of God. And speaking to God, and then bringing these things down and handing them to souls. Whenever it's the preaching of the faith, first we go and get the things of God, come down and hand them to souls. And so this is why our Lord had to experience a crucifixion. Then he had then he went up into heaven. Then he came down after the both the experience of the sorrow of the crucifixion and the joy of seeing God face to face in his humanity, and then coming back down and carrying with his humanity this great grace and this great truth. And this great peace to hand on to his apostles. And then they had to go out to the ends of the earth and become exhausted doing the work of God. And then as they're going their way doing the work of God, they go up to heaven and come back down. Go up to heaven and come back down. And continue to hand on the treasures of the earth and the treasures of heaven to the earth. And this is going to continue until the ending of times. So we must remember there must always be a cross. There must always be a death. And then after this cross and death, Going up to heaven and getting treasures and bringing them down. And this happens now in this kingdom of this time of Easter. In any case, we'll close it at that. When, as your happy Easter season and this great time of going up and getting the things of God, bringing down. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, but as, but as I give, I give unto you. Let us understand and contemplate and enter into the peace that Christ gives unto us. And this peace that no man can take from us. Blessing bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.